Hello, church. Happy New Year. Hope you're having a uh, good morning. Uh, today, Sunday, January the 1st, 2023. Hard to believe. Not sure where 2022 went, but it did go. So this morning, I want to just uh, share with you our scriptures and some thoughts today. Um, as we start the new year, I don't normally like to just do those new year kinds of here's five steps kind of a thing, but it may get there. I don't know. But I uh, want to start off uh, reading with uh, uh, Psalm 148, <clears throat> uh, reading out of the New Living Translation that, of course, we have from church. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him from the skies. Praise him, all his angels. Praise him, all the armies of heaven. Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you twinkling stars. Praise him, skies above. Praise him, vapors high above the clouds. Let every created thing give praise to the Lord, for he issued his command and they came into being. He set them in place forever and ever. His decree will never be revoked. Praise the Lord from the earth, you creatures of the ocean depths, fire and hail, snow and clouds, wind and weather that obey him, mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars, wild animals and all livestock, small scurrying animals and birds, kings of the earth and all people, rulers and judges of the earth, young men and young women, old men and children. Let them all praise the name of the Lord, for his name is very great. His glory towers over the earth and heaven. He has made his people strong, honoring his faithful ones, the people of Israel who are close to him. Now, as, as I've been thinking through these scriptures uh, today, this week and so forth, just some, just some thoughts from these scriptures to help us when life hits this year. Uh, maybe some things to, to just keep in mind. Um, not necessarily steps to being success, this or that, but just some things to keep in mind. And out of this, if we look back to, to the first five verses in Psalm 148, basically it's praising God for everything. God is worthy of praise by everything because he created everything. All that is, he created. And that's a pretty astounding kind of idea when when I look at all the things that are listed through here, we've got we've got the 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 angels and so forth. We've got all of the of the uh, uh, heavenly bodies, the sun, the moon, stars, and skies. All the stuff here on Earth created, ocean depths, weather, fire, storm, slow snow and clouds, wind, and all of these things. Everything is from God. He created all that is. So remember this year when things get a little nutty, God created all that is. Nothing is catching him off guard at all. Now, our other New Testament reading is in the book of Isaiah, chapter 63, uh, verses 7, 8, and 9. Uh, a wonderful little passage for us here. Uh, so let's read Isaiah 63, beginning with verse 7. Isaiah says, I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. I will praise the Lord for all he has done. I will rejoice in his great goodness to Israel, which he has granted according to his mercy and love. He said, they are my very own people. Surely they will not betray me again. And, and he became their savior. In all their suffering, he also suffered. And personally, he rescued them. In his love and mercy, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them. It's going to be helpful this year, I'm pretty sure, to remember, as it says there in verse 7, that God's love is unfailing. Paul, uh, Paul not Paul this time. Uh, Isaiah says that, that I will tell of the Lord's unfailing love. That's an amazing thing for us. Because who knows what's going to happen, right? But we can know, not only did he create all things, but he has for us his unfailing love. And that's important for us to know and to, to keep in mind and remember. And then he says, you know, we're going to praise him for all he has done. When we praise God, when we think about God, 
most of the time we really only can appreciate God in the way he relates to us. His unfailing love, that's part of his character. That's a main part of his character, his unfailing love. But that's not a fact until it becomes in relation with you and I. And so we can appreciate that with him. And we can, we can appreciate God for everything he has done. Because let's face it, if he made everything, then everything is in his hand. That can give us great faith. Um, and we can appreciate God for all of his goodness. It says, I'll rejoice in his great goodness to Israel, which he has granted according to his mercy and love. Now he's talking about granting it to Israel, but, but that also applies to you and I as well. His great goodness, according not to what Israel did or does, but according to his mercy and his love. Even taking to, into account our failures and our faithlessness sometimes. He seeks us out. Remember, read what it says here in verse eight. God said, they're my very own people. Surely they will not betray me again. Now, I, I, humanly speaking, that kind of sounds like wishful thinking, doesn't it? Surely they won't betray me again, but, but he became their savior, our savior. It is something that he seeks us out. And note this in verse nine, it says, in all their suffering, he also suffered. Sometimes showing that love, sometimes rescuing, involves suffering. But in his love and his mercy, in his rescuing of us, he lifts us up and carries us. That's a good thing to keep in mind. And then our gospel passage is Matthew chapter two. Now I gotta be honest with you. Matthew chapter two is a little, it's a little touchy because there's a, there's a lot going on here. Uh, this is, this is a, a passage about the escape to Egypt. Um, Matthew chapter two, beginning with verse 13, going on to verse 23. After the wise men were gone, this was after the Magi had visited. After the wise men were gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, flee to Egypt with the child and his mother, the angel said. Stay there until I tell you to return because Herod is gonna search for the child to kill him. That night, Joseph left for Egypt with the child and Mary, his mother, and they stayed there until Herod's death. This fulfilled what the Lord had spoken through the prophet. I called my son out of Egypt. Herod was furious when he realized that the wise men had outwitted him. He sent soldiers to kill all the boys in and around Bethlehem who were two years old and under, based on the wise men's report of the star's first appearance. Herod's brutal action fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A cry was heard in Ramah. Weeping and great mourning, Rachel weeps for her children, refusing to be comforted, for they are dead. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt. Get up, the angel said. Take the child and his mother back to the land of Israel, because those who were trying to kill the child are dead. So Joseph got up and returned to the land of Israel with Jesus and his mother. But when he learned that the new ruler of Judea was Herod's son, Archelaus, he was afraid to go there. Then, after being warned in a dream, he left for the region of Galilee. So the family went and lived in a town called Nazareth. This fulfilled what the prophet had said. He will be called a Nazarene. Now, one of the things about this passage that's a little tough is it involves so much tragedy. The good news here, and something for us to keep in mind as we wind our way into this new year, God protects. God warned Joseph in a dream to protect his young son, to take them to Egypt for safety's sake. So God does protect, and God kept them protected in Egypt until it was time to come back to Israel. And eventually they settled up in Nazareth. And that's a good thing for us to remember because again, not, not only does God make everything, uh, but God has unfailing love for us. And, and then on top of that, he protects us. But I think that there's something here also in that is that 
frankly, God does some things sometimes that we may never understand in this life. This is a tough passage because uh, uh, Herod basically goes on a genocide and kills or at least orders the death of all two year and under babies, baby boys. What a terrible thing. What evil that is. I don't understand why God would let that happen. But the good news is, is that we'll understand at some point. And there might be things this year we don't understand what's going on. It could be personally. It could be in a family. It could be in our friends. It could be in our country, a church, anything. We may not understand this side of heaven, but we have to trust in those things that we've already decided, that, that God made everything that is, that God has unfailing love and great mercy for us, and that we can have his protection for us. And so we have that hope, and that's what we need to keep with. And then finally, I want us to look at uh, Hebrews chapter 2 in the book of Hebrews, uh, chapter 2, uh, verses 10 through 18. 10 through 18. The writer of Hebrews says, God, for whom and through whom everything was made, sounds a lot like what we just read in the Psalms, doesn't it? Chose to bring many children into glory. And it was only right that he should make Jesus, through his suffering, a perfect leader, fit to bring them into their salvation. Now Jesus and the ones he makes holy have the same father. That is why Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters. For he said to God, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. I will praise you among your assembled people. He also said, I will put my trust in him. That is, I and the children God has given me. Because God's children are human beings made of flesh and blood, the Son also became flesh and blood. For only as a human being could he die, and only by dying could he break the power of the devil, who had the power of death. Only in this way could he set free all who have lived their lives as slaves to the fear of dying. We also know that the Son did not come to help angels. He came to help the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, it was necessary for him to be made in every respect like us, his brothers and sisters, so that he could be our merciful and faithful high priest before God. Then he could offer a sacrifice that would take away the sins of the people. Since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we are being tested. That's a tremendous group of promises that are there. God is close by through Christ. Did you hear that when he says, uh, he said that uh, uh, he is close, he, that God chose to bring many children into glory through Jesus and through Jesus' suffering. Jesus can make us holy. What a wonderful, awesome privilege that is to be, as I've talked about before, as we noted in the Bible elsewhere, that we're his brothers and sisters. We are made into the family of God, adopted in to the family. And then the, the, the author of Hebrews talks about how that Christ had to become a human because God's children are human beings. And he broke the power of the devil and uh, that we are set free from the fear of dying. And that God came to help us. So this year, as we face whatever we face, you know, I'd love it for it to be a unicorn, sunshine, and roses. But, uh, you know, life is life and it'll happen. And as life does happen, as we go through it, it's helpful for us to remember that Jesus came for us. He died for us. He rose from the dead for us. So that he could, as the writer here says, offer a sacrifice to take away our sins. He has gone through, and this is probably the best thing when we are in those moments that are very, very difficult. Verse 18, since he himself has gone through suffering and testing, he is able to help us when we're being tested. That's a tremendous hope because when the moment of testing comes, we get tempted to 
not remember God's unfailing love. We tend to forget about mercy and, uh, and his grace to us. But here we know, because of what Jesus went through himself, he is able to help us. So as we start the new year, today, fresh, with a brand new set of calendar pages and trying to figure out how to write 2023 on our checks, if you still write checks, then what we'll do is remember that God has an unfailing love towards each of us, that he extends his mercy to us, that he sent Jesus to be our sacrifice so that we could have that adoption into the family and that Jesus has gone through the suffering and the testing and he's able to help us when we go through ours. May the Lord richly bless you today. Plan on seeing you next Sunday in church, live and in person. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. I hope you've been having a wonderful holiday season. Take care. Bless you. And we'll see you soon.